What's up guys? Welcome back to Half Men Half Tech. So today Apple has done it again. They are out here jumping betas. We actually jumped from iOS 14.4 beta 2 that had a D at the end in the build number to what we have here today which is iOS 14.4 release candidate. This is more or less like the GM or the version that is most likely going to be released to the public most probably next week. Now for me as you can see on my iPhone here it came in at around 4.06 gig and this is going to differ because I'm actually updating from 14.4 beta 2. If you are updating from a prior version like 14.3 it's going to be a bigger update size for you. So keep that in mind, make sure you have enough space. And if we go to see some of the changes that came with this update in terms of software wise, go to settings and then we go to general and we go to the about this iPhone section here. You can see the new build number that we have here, 18D52. That is the build number that we have here. And if we go down a little bit to see the modern firmware update, this was updated on beta 2, I believe. And as you can see, it's 4.02.01. So hopefully if you're having some issues when it comes to cell, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, AirDrop or so on, that fixes this issue for you. So now let's go to the iPhone storage to see how much this update is taking. Just takes a moment to load. And if we scroll all the way down, it just takes a moment because I have so many things on this iPhone. You can see that it's actually taking up 8.08 .08 gig. Now this is exactly the same as what I had on beta 2. So no changes right there. Now, before we look at the new features and changes, let's see some other OS that Apple released today. So you can see the operating system that were released today. We have macOS Pixel 11.2 RC. We have iOS 14.4 RC. We have iPadOS 14.4 RC. We also have watchOS 7.3 RC. Most of these updates I'm going to be doing videos on it besides tvOS 14.4 which also came out today by the way. So if you have a supported device and you want to update you can do that. And on top of that Apple released Xcode 12.4 RC. So this is good. Apple has released a ton today. And now let's look at the new features and changes that came with this update. The first one has to do with an update to the QR code. So if you open your camera app and you have a small QR code that you would like to scan, for example, let's scan this one that you see here. So as you can see, it's managed to detect that. And if we click on this link that popped up here, you can see that it takes us to the Apple support here. And it also prompts us to install the Apple support app, which I already have, by the way. So that is the QR code that I scanned and it can, it can even scan smaller QR codes within the camera app. And also something else that change if we go into the settings and then go to where it says sounds and haptics right there. If you have this option that says headphone safety on and you turn it on like this, you're going to sort of experience some issues when it comes to audio devices that you connect to your iPhone like speakers or headphones. Now, if you want to reduce the noise, you can set this on and select the decibel that you want to select. And usually, it's recommended to not go beyond 90 decibels. Otherwise, if you listen to over 90 decibels for a long time, that could cause hearing loss. But if you have this feature on and you want to connect to a Bluetooth device, audio device, you go to your Bluetooth section here. And let's say, for example, we connect to this one. As you can see here, I have the option to select device type. So if I click there, I can select this to be my headphone or car stereo or hearing aid speaker or other. Now, the reason why Apple does this is so that they can better customize and give you the best user experience when it comes to audio. So this is the change that is there with this update when it comes to audio. And it's something that you can always check out and customize yourself depending on the devices that you have, of course. Now, if you have the iPhone 12, any series or, or any version of the iPhone 12. So the iPhone 12, the iPhone 12 mini, the iPhone 12 Pro or 12 Pro Max, and you had like a camera module replacement or your camera was replaced, your phone will be able to warn you if you are using a counterfeit part or if the part that was put in your phone isn't genuine. This is sort of a kick towards third party people who fix phones, but also it's something that, you know, gives consumers or people 
for more information towards what's inside or what has been used to service their phone. So I'm not quite sure whether you're going to be seeing it through the camera app or whether you're going to be seeing through the settings. And once you go in the settings, you have to, to go to like the camera section right there and your phone will be able to warn you that the part that is being used or the camera module that has been used to replace that which was in your phone isn't genuine. We saw this previously when it came to batteries and now this with regards to the iPhone 12 is now applicable. I'm sure it's something that consumers will appreciate more but also for the people that fix phones it could be a letdown of some sort but either way it's good that it's here. I appreciate and would like to know what's inside my iPhone. Also with this iOS 14.4 you now have the ability to alert others when it comes to exposure notifications. Now in order for this to work you have to go to your settings and go to exposure notifications and you have to have it supported in your region or country. Now for me where I am in BC this is something that's still in the works but most provinces in Canada do have this but BC is a little bit slow when it comes to this but if you do have it you can actually turn on an option that allows you to warn others should you have been in contact with someone and this better improves contact tracing. It's something good that came with this update and also if you are playing like an audio or something with your iPhone and you want to do audio handover all you have to do is just you know bring the home pod closer to the iPhone like this and the song will actually transfer over to the home pod. The same is also true whether you receive a call you can always transfer or hand over your call to the home pod. This is something good. Now with this update they actually didn't mention anything when it comes to the new find my icons so it's not something that's fully supported or fully here with iOS 14.4. It could be something that's coming in the future. Now let's talk about some issues or bugs that were fixed with this update. The first one has to do with the camera for those that have the iPhone 12 Pro. Now if you take HDR videos and then you view them sometimes you might see some artifacts that could appear in your photos and that issue has been addressed with this update and also if you use the Apple Fitness on your watch and on your iPhone and you use the widget sometimes it would give you wrong information and basically this is the widget that we're talking about the fitness widget right here so sometimes it would mislead you or give you wrong information and that has been fixed with this update. The data or the health information you get from it will be accurate. It also fixes an issue whereby sometimes you'll be typing and there will be like typing delays so as you can see it's actually responsive now there's no delays and it's not dropping frames like what was happening on the, some previous betas and that is a good thing that came with this update so it's a plus when it comes to that and also sometimes when you would pull up your keyboard like this it was an issue whereby the keyboard would show up in a language that you had not set so that issue has actually also been fixed and sometimes if you use the Apple News app and you are an Apple News Plus subscriber it would sometimes not play audio when you are connected to Apple Car or sometimes when you are connected to a Bluetooth device. So that has been fixed and also when it comes to switch control accessibility. So you go to your settings and you go to accessibility and when you go to switch control and you have this on sometimes it wouldn't allow you to receive calls when your screen is locked. So if I was to lock my screen like this and I have switch control on I wouldn't be able to answer calls with my screen locked. That is an issue that was there and it's been resolved with this update and basically those are most of the issues that were fixed with this update. I would say that so far for the last few hours that I've been using this update I haven't had any bugs so far. I would say it's quite stable and feels smooth. You can see when opening applications how fast it opens and yeah I'm quite happy with this update and now let's just look at the performance figures of this update. If we go into the Geekbench score that I performed here and go to the history you can see that for CPU with this 
14.4, single core I had a score of 917 and multi core I had a score of 2236. Comparing this to the previous update which was beta 2, you can see that for single core I had 931 and for multi core I had 1956. So for single core it tends to be a little bit slow but for multi threaded workloads you can see that it's faster compared to what we had on 14.4 beta 2. So if we go to the compute or the GPU performance, we can see that on 14.4, I had 38.51 and previously on 14.4 beta 2, I had 39.36. Again, it's a little bit behind, but not by much. It's not a change that you'll be able to drastically experience or suffer from. But other than that, I would say that performance-wise, you can see how applications open like and 2.2, another Geekbench app, opens quite fast you can see it's quick and cpu x here opens quick all these apps i'm actually opening for the first time so it's good to see how fast it's been performing for me so far now if i do experience any issues or bugs i'll update you on my social media handles and basically if we go to the battery section right here and go to battery and go to the battery health you can see my battery health didn't change since the last beta it's still on 85 percent and if we go back and go to the last 10 days usage the usage that you see here is mostly for ios 14.4 beta 2 which was the previous beta that I was on before i updated to this ios 14.4 so i'll do perhaps a follow-up video in about two days after using this update fully to see how this update performs for me and if i find any more new features or if i experience some new bugs i'll be able to update you now other than that that's how it came in for me on my iphone that you see here and whether you should update or not i would really say that i feel like if you are on 14.4 beta 2 and then of course this is an update to go for the build number is stable and the version itself feels smooth but if you aren't on the beta this is you know just temporary i believe perhaps apple might release the full release next week so just a week or two and then you know you will see the official release instead of you risking your main device and going on a beta a beta is always never 100 percent predictable but other than that that's how it came in for me and i hope you like this video if you did a like would be good and if you haven't subscribed a sub would be great stay safe and i'll see you in the next video very soon peace